Right, good afternoon. Um, obviously yesterday was the 4th of July. Uh, we're very thankful to the Minneapolis Park Board, the Minneapolis Park Police, for bringing back the fireworks show. The Red, White and Boom event returned last night and it was a great success. Thousands and thousands of people were able to enjoy the, the fireworks. Uh, additionally, there was no one seriously injured last night. And unlike previous years, uh, there was no one uh, that was a victim of a shooting anywhere in the city. So those things are the good news. The bad news is that, once again, we had groups of teenagers and young adults uh, back at it, attacking police and other persons and property by throwing fireworks at them. Starting Wednesday night, the Minneapolis Police Department began monitoring social media and found invitations on social media platforms uh, advertising these gatherings. Those invitations function similarly to what other cities have seen in recent years with what they call pop-up events, telling people something's going to happen and then eventually listing the location for groups of people to then show up. They encourage people to come to Minneapolis and commit these egregious, dangerous, and just frankly stupid acts. I don't think I have to tell you, but throwing fireworks at people, throwing fireworks at cars with people in them is extremely dangerous. And the people and the police officers are targeted, uh, could have received very serious injuries. Two years ago, we had some examples of that. We had a person and, uh, who was permanently scarred by injuries caused by these fireworks that had been thrown at them. Last year, a young man not far from where we're standing right now was very seriously injured uh, when, a, when a firework exploded, injuring him in, in his abdomen. While no one was injured this year, we certainly came close. I was out on the street myself with our officers all night last night, uh, and I was with a group of cops when a mortar was thrown at us, very close to where other pedestrians were and while cars were driving by with their windows open. When it exploded, it shook my body. It was literally louder than when a shotgun goes off very close to you. That's the power of these things. Uh, if that thing had gotten into a car, if it had gotten too close to one of the pedestrians out there, it could have taken a limb off, if not, uh, you know, if not kill a person. It's ridiculous that our residents and other people visiting our town have to deal with this egregious behavior. That's why the law enforcement response this year was different. Minneapolis police had over 200 additional officers working, and we had a very robust plan in place with all of our law enforcement partners to deal with this criminal behavior. I'm, hap I'm happy to say that thankfully no one was seriously injured by last, night, last night's attacks. I'm very thankful to the Minnesota State Patrol, who had at least 50 troopers out here with us, to Ramsey County Sheriff Bob Fletcher and deputies who came over to assist us, uh, as well as to Chief Ohato, the Minneapolis Park Police, who were out here for the night, and dozens of officers from the University of Minnesota Police as well. Through a coordinated effort this year, there were dozens of arrests and citations made, dozens of illegal fireworks that were seized, and illegal firework act activity that was recovered. Most of these incidents this year did occur on the east side of the river, predominantly in the Dinky Town area. That's different from last year, and we had a very difficult time chasing large groups of individuals all around the city. At this point, what I can tell you for sure is that we have made 30 arrests and issued five citations. Of those, 27 were adults and eight were juveniles. That number is likely to increase because there were a number of different agencies involved in this operation and the majority of the reports are still not completed. Those arrested age, ranged from, in age from 15 to 23. We can get you an exact breakdown by gender and age if you want it. Uh, but again, like last year, 28 of these individuals were from outside the city of Minneapolis. Five of them are not even from Minnesota. They came from Kansas, Massachusetts, and two from Maine. These investigations will continue and if we, when we are able, we will identify and charge as many people uh, as possible who were not arrested last night. If, you ha if we're asking the public if they have any specific information that may help us uh, in advancing these, in these investigations, please call Crime Stoppers or contact the MPD or email uh, our tip line. Uh, I do anticipate that we will have some video, some public video to release at some point today. Um, we're just going through that and trying to decipher 
uh, what we can show the public that won't disrupt uh, ongoing investigations, but just to give folks a better sense of the seriousness of the problem that was happening. And that being said, I'll just I'll open it up for any questions people have. What time did the first call come in and then how long did it go? You know, it's difficult to decipher these things out because Minneapolis is just like every town in America. People shoot off fireworks on the 4th of July. That's not unusual. I would say, uh, just like in previous years, the problem with shooting fireworks at people, at property, that started around midnight, okay. just like it has in previous okay. years. And then yeah. what time were you wrapped up with making all the arrests? Uh, the uh, additional, uh, well, last uh, arrest from the additional officers that were going on probably happened uh, close to 3 in the morning. However, the, the jail was backed up. I know our officers were dealing with, I believe, a five-hour wait in the jail. Um, so that, that just goes to show you. And obviously, we had 35. There's also going to be arrests made by patrol that are not included in this. That's why it's just going to take some time to go through and, and rectify all the numbers. Chief, what misdemeanor or felony charges? What kind of charges are you looking for? Majority of the charges uh, are for riot. So there's uh, some places where we were trying to get people to just leave. They kept refusing, kept setting up. Uh, and then uh, essentially we conducted uh, and videoed individuals engaging in this, in this activity and then with the help of the state patrol came in and arrested everyone that was a part of it. And that's yeah. felony riot? Yeah, that's riot. Uh, additionally, there'll be charges for assault for individuals that we know specifically through uh, mortars and, and rockets at people. So these, these were folks not just shooting off fireworks, they were targeting Correct. people yes. and yes. refusing to leave that sort of Yes, thing. yeah, that's... That's the problem that we deal with. Um, you know, we understand it's the 4th of July, some people are going to shoot off fireworks. We're most concerned about this really, really dangerous and just stupid behavior of shooting them at random people. I mean, I've seen in some of the traffic that was out there last night, groups would come and just shoot fireworks off and they're exploding like underneath people's cars. People are driving down with their windows open and convertibles. It's just, it's extremely dangerous. Chief, there was a, a Somali youth uh, violence interrupter group out last night. Did that make any difference at all? Sure. Um, there were, uh, like here, there were, I know there were ambassadors from uh, the park board. The park board had people here. We had different uh, community-based groups, uh, both in Dinky Town, uh, and I know uh, one of the groups from uh, Cedar Riverside was down by uh, Lake Bidet, uh, uh, Bidet Makaska, thank you. Um, and I know that is very helpful. Uh, you know, any bit of help we can get from community, uh, especially those who know some of these individuals or might know their family members, might know a, a, a clergy person they know, that's very helpful to try and prevent a lot of this activity. Um, the, the, when you see these groups of people, the vast majority of them are not actually involved in shooting the fireworks at people but they're part of the problem because they're showing up in response to the social media and they're providing an audience for this stuff to continue. Did the closure of the parkways around the lakes yeah. help? Yeah, that was, uh, that was Chief Ohato. That was brilliant. Uh, it definitely made a difference. It made a difference on Wednesday night. Uh, Wednesday night, uh, around 8.30, we got information that, uh, again, that was stuff out on social media to meet up on Wednesday night. We were able to get in front of that, disrupt groups that had started to form down by the lake uh, and, at, and at other places. And those closures around the lake are going to continue through the weekend. So to address where mm -hmm. everyone is from, mm -hmm. I mean, does that just mean that their driver's license says they're from Boston or from Maine? You don't have yes. information that they're literally flying in to do stuff like No, that. but we did. Uh, no, there's certainly, and I'm sure residents could tell you too, there's certainly uh, noticeably vehicles driving around without a state plates too, which seemed, uh, you know, more unusual. Um, but I don't know specifically people here, maybe they're here for the holidays, you know, people do travel for the holiday weekend and so on. Um, but it is definitely, uh, like last year, a majority of people involved in this stuff that are not from our city. Well, what does that say to you? I'm, I'm trying to kind of understand the context of it. Yeah, um, I think it's important, uh, especially when it just feels like there's so many people that attack Minneapolis or kind of want Minneapolis to fail or sort of label all of our residents in a certain way, uh, it's just a fact that the majority of the people that are we are coming into contact with that are causing these problems are not residents of the city. Do you think they came here specifically? I don't know. I don't know. It's groups of young people, again, everybody that we were in contact with, teenagers, 15 to 23. Um, 
I don't know. Just to clarify, all yeah. the, the arrests, were they all made on Thursday night, or were there some made Wednesday as These well? These arrests that I'm talking about were Thursday night. Uh, on Wednesday night we were out here, we seized fireworks, uh, towed some vehicles. Uh, I'm not certain of arrests on Wednesday night, though. Yeah. So this was primarily Dinky Town. Where yes. Are, where else were arrests made? Um, so we had something uh, late at night down by uh, Lake Nokomis. That was around 3 in the morning. Uh, there were two arrests down there. Um, and that's, that's all the information I have that's outside of the Dinky Town area. Southeast. So you kind of alluded to it. Um, mm -hmm. You had a, a pattern of it was like a, a deploying police to in a riot formation to move people yep. back. How, how dangerous and problematic is that? Where were they taking space? Like? Yes. Thank you for raising that. Um, I really have to say, you know, I'm extremely thankful to Minneapolis police officers, the state troopers that were out here, all the cops that were out here. You know, uh, for 12 plus hours away from their family again on the holiday in just very dangerous conditions. It was a lot of folks out here and it's very difficult to try and identify in a group, you know, who's, who's causing the problem, who's the one that's shooting the fireworks at people when you're in such a large crowd. Uh, several times, like the time I mentioned, uh, you know, troopers and Minneapolis officers are trying to move an entire group uh, where fireworks are being shot at people and then you have someone come up from behind and throw a mortar at the police. Um, so very dangerous, and it just it takes time. Uh, if people aren't just going to leave and they're going to keep moving from spot to spot, it takes time to develop a plan to get enough police in place to then safely uh, have the evidence that you need uh, to arrest specific individuals and move in without them being able to flee and just you know continue to cause the problem elsewhere. Did your folks sustain any injuries or really close calls? Uh, Definitely close calls, yes. I mean, uh, there was a mortar that went off uh, just a couple feet from us, uh, again, uh, you know, uh, and, and I'm sure, uh, I know there were others that were reported um, on the south side of town. I know there's at least one uh, instance where fireworks were shot at a police car. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, it's dangerous to the kids that are involved in this, the kids that are coming to watch this stuff. To our residents, to, you know, people driving by, it's dangerous to everybody. Same kind of police presence. Can we expect that with Taste of Minnesota tonight this weekend? You know, we've uh, we're definitely going to have stepped up uh, uh, enforcement and patrols all through the weekend. Uh, we've been uh, very successful. Uh, you know, for example, last weekend, you know, we had between the Olympics, we had Pride going on, we had Somali Independence Week, lots of events happening, uh, and thank God everybody's safe. And we're going to continue that posture uh, through the weekend. Were these kids targeting uh, police officers primarily or civilians or, or, or a mix? A mix. Definitely targeting people, um, you know, uh, at cars. Um, and then at times, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was very obvious police officers at times, too. And by when you say people, are, like, is there shooting at each other or at random no. people driving by? No. Last year we had that. Um, it did not appear or at least I'm not aware of uh, anything last, this year of people shooting back and forth at each other. And I think that's because the police presence was so large. Um, we were able to cut off vehicular traffic uh, into this large area very quickly, maintain that. Uh, I think that that made a difference. So random victims? In yes. Okay. Yeah. So you had MPD, uh, you said State Patrol, State Patrol. Well, Park Police, any yep. other agencies? University of Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.